Well, it's still the breakfast and plus TV Africa. Uh, we're excited to have Dr. Eugene Itwa, who's a, a sustainability expert as well as an environmental specialist. Dr. Eugene, it's good to have you join us. Good morning. Good morning to you. Well, a bit of it, President Mohamed Buhari has charged the National Council on Climate Change to formulate an appropriate, uh, appropriate policy towards achieving uh, green growth and sustainable economic development for Nigeria. The president, in a statement by presidential spokesman Femi Adeshina, said that development marked the commencement of the implementation of climate Change Act of 2021 and a new chapter and in renewed response to climate change in the country. He also, that's the president, directed the Attorney General and the Minister of Justice in conjunction with the Minister of Environment to initiate appropriate amendment of noticeable implementation uh, challenges inherent in the act. Uh, highlighting the losses and damages caused by the recent increasing floods in several parts of the country, as well as in Pakistan, uh, Bangladesh, and other parts of East and Southern Africa. He described climate change as one of the biggest challenges facing humanity. Now, this inauguration and all of this is actually a response of government to the global uh, you know, climate challenges. Uh, Dr. Eugene, what are your thoughts on this? Uh, thank you very much, mm -hmm. and, uh, and I think uh, the president is quite apt in what he had actually said to the spokesman. And I will say this is uh, this is a watershed, and uh, we at the critical point, and the president is taking the decisive step through this miss, and also it's quite appreciated. For me, is a good one, and we must all support it. Uh, looking at uh, talking about uh, before now, we've had uh, proposals for getting, uh, I mean, in terms of preparing bills at the National Assembly to get the climate change uh, acts on, but we never succeeded in the previous uh, assemblies. But now we've uh, had this, and the president does this last year, and so we are happy. And uh, it's actually coming right on time, looking at the, the various challenges that we're having. As we prepare for COP27, one of the critical elements that will further be given attention to should be the uh, loss and damage aspect. And the president, in his remark, has indeed highlighted that. So for me, it, 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 it's quite a, 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 a very it's a good one. And so I, I'm happy to see that the government or the president has inaugurated the council. Uh, long before now, we actually had expected that uh, the, uh, the, 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 the council would be inaugurated, but unfortunately, there was a bit of delay. Uh, but now we have uh, it's inaugurated earlier. We had the, the, the director general, the, who is the secretary to the council, that was uh, appointed by the president. And so we're all happy for this, to see all of this happening at this very critical time. Now, but just before we get to the, you know, the crux, really, of the conversation, uh, I mean, let's also look at, you know, all the factors. One of the issues I was mentioned is the issue of flooding. And we know the flooding has been very critical for the Nigerian uh, state or the nation, if you want to talk about, uh, across different parts of the country. Flooding is an issue. But if you juxtapose of flooding in Nigeria, in other parts of the country, would you say that flooding for Nigeria is a natural disaster or is man-made? Flooding, uh, generally, everywhere is flooded, simply put. It's uh, just, where is it in the world that is not flooded? Or that will not receive its own dose of flooding? Everywhere in the world, it is not just about the uh, yeah, issue of Nigeria. Interestingly, we are aware that uh, the IPCC, the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, Earlier, I had said a whole lot of things about this, especially for the African continent, for instance. There are the issues of uh, intensity of rain, rainfall. There is, you have intensity of rainfall everywhere. And then dry spells uh, in some other locations where the rains are not coming. And now we will have rains coming in areas that we are here to uh, have a lot of dry spells. So for, 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 it's not just about Nigeria. It's just that our 
issues appear to be a bit peculiar for the fact that we do not prepare to manage these emergencies. We granted that we have even early warning system from the regulatory uh, authorities. Do we actually act with respect to that? We don't until it's right on us before we start taking measures after the act. I, I think that's where this uh, it seems to be overwhelming. And the the intensity of rainfall we cannot is not uh, it's not uh, man made. But of course, if you say it's man made, Taylor needs to or uh, tie need to the issues of climate change. Yes, but generally we know that all mankind's activity has indeed intensified rainfall, extremes of temperature, extremes of rainfall. Just uh, name it; they are all here upon us. So for us, as far as we're concerned in Nigeria, it's not just a, a, about being a peculiar situation. As we able to develop toward, at one time or the other, had, had their own dose of these challenges. But it's the management that we seem to be lacking. Preparing for them and then managing uh, all of this. I think that is where we seem to be uh, overwhelmed. Well, so so it definitely means that you are agreeing with the school of thought that says that, you know, the flooding that we're experiencing in Nigeria, when you juxtapose that with the entire globe, uh, we're not saying that climate change is not eminent, but we're saying that what we experience in our country is actually man-made, is induced. Because, uh, number one, I would tell you that you have a, a country where most parts, lack of drainage system, and water, by its nature, will always find its way. It's, it's, it's a force. It cannot wait for the government or the people to adhere or respect it. And so lack of drainages or in, in, in situations where you have the drainage system, the drainage system is clogged. That's due to human interaction. We toss things in, in a drainage system. You want to call them the gutters or the waterways. And that's really it. So. I want to know where you stand in all of this. Yeah, you recall I talked about ma management. I talked about even when you have regulatory authorities announcing that the amount of rainfall for a certain period will be more than usual. What are we supposed to do? Of course, prepare. It's part of the element of management that I talked about. I didn't want to go into those specifics of saying oh, the drainage lines are clogged or oh, we do not. Recall, I'll give you an example, Lagos, for instance. In those days when they had what they call gang, they had that, uh, the officers that would come around before the rainfall season, the drilling lines are cleared. And so when the rains come, they, they follow the channels, except those that have their homes across the water channels or close to the water channels that will have the areas are you know, uh, uh, overwhelmed. But otherwise, you have, it's known, it's, uh, it's given. So there is no need uh, repeating and repeating. But again, for the sake of awareness, for the sake of reminding us, if you are looking at it from that angle, yes, uh, it, 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 it's part of the entire challenges. But it is not, if we clear, if we have enough drain lines, well, unfortunately, we don't even have enough drain lines in a number of locations in a number, across the country. So we first and foremost need to be able to put drain lines where they should exist. And then these drain lines, of course, should not be clogged, like you have already uh, uh, pointed out. But again, just to let you know that when the rains come, when the banks of the rivers are over flooded, there is little you really can't do other than to allow this rain uh, 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 when they come they have a channel to go uh, to follow through. A, a, a place like uh, Plateau State, I recall, uh, some, uh, we, we, uh, especially Joss, nothing we ever had uh, flooding. Because when the rains come, there are channels, because of the landscape, they, 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 the water really goes away. But as we, we, you do, we have a plain land, you don't have channels, the water cannot go, it remains there. But, but, but let's, so not on this I mean, are part of human, let's uh, progress human to other issues to dr eugene let, let, let's look at all the other issues i like the fact that uh, you know the, the president has made reference to the uh climate change act of 2021 
uh, the act provides a framework for Nigeria. I mean, we, this committee that's inaugurated, I mean, we're big on saying let's implement whatever it is. And so the uh, Climate Change Act of 2021, the act provides a framework for Nigeria to achieve a low greenhouse gas immersion through inclusive greenhouse or green growth and sustainable economic development, development and implementation of Nigeria's commitment to meet uh, zero emission declared at the time. We're talking about that uh, uh, Pari agreement that were part of this agreement. But my question is, do you think that this is rational for a country that is highly dependent on oil, uh, you know, gas? We're talking about oil now for earnings. So do you think it's rational that as a country in Africa, we're getting into such an agreement where we know that we're highly dependent on the uh, oil economy for earnings. So what becomes of us? How much are we even emitting, I mean, emitting at the end of the day, if you talk of, about emissions, when you juxtapose that with uh, countries of the world in the South? So you're talking about the North and the South now. Do you think it's rational that we are getting into this agreement as a country? I'm not even talking about Africa as a continent. Uh, maybe I, should, I will separate the art from the Paru agreement that you talked about. That agreement, of course, we signed it in a number of countries also had endorsed it, and so it's operational. Just to let you know, as we're looking at the issues of emissions, we're also looking at issues of beauty, resilient society, adaptation elements. So, uh, the flooding you talked about just now uh, relates to the, that, that aspect of building a resilient society. So that agreement also talked about this. The challenge perhaps you want to take from that is, oh, we continue to talk about emission emission like you have just talked about, uh, mentioned. But again, it's not just all about emission. No matter, no matter how small it is, we contribute. But going beyond that, what is it that the agreement said, the other element that I just talked about, that will not be our own focus. For instance, not too long ago, I am aware that uh, uh, some world leaders met at, uh, in Netherlands uh, on the platform on global center on adaptation, looking at the, the, the common focus for the African continent as we build up towards uh, COP27. And the issue there is what can support the African continent? What can support Nigeria? The, yes, it is said that uh, the African continent, for instance, the emission from it is about 2 to 3%. I think that is what is uh, said here and there. But no matter how small it is, we emit. So how do we all move together? That is what you are talking about now. We should all move together. But then we should emphasize our own peculiar challenges. We should be able to, if they are saying, oh, we do this to bring our emission, we should also be able to emphasize over and over to say that, look, the one that touches us is this. Let's also emphasize the issues of adaptation. Let's also emphasize the issues of building climate resilience in our community so that even when we have the flood, we're able to deal with it. Let's talk about the issues of loss and damage so that we can uh, adequately take uh, uh, account and prepare for all of that and manage them effectively and reduce the impact. So it is, uh, like I've said, it is not so too with the Climate Change Act. The Climate Change Act, like based on what you even just said, talked about the issue of resilience. Yes, we have a carbon budget to meet. Yes, we have uh, issues of decarbonization even right there in the arts. But Dr. Eugene, uh, just I to mean, let you know, as much as it, it sounds like as a country, because I don't think that we're being honest with ourselves as a country and a continent. If you juxtapose it, it's not fair. We're talking about, about you know, a country where there's equity, justice, and what's the essence of having countries come together for you know, national prosperity or global prosperity. When nations come together, they should be looking at the interest. You know that our mission, I mean, looking at the statistics, six point about six nine two percent is what Nigeria has emitted in July at a, at, at a certain time. Can it be juxtaposed with other you know, emissions from other parts of the country. 
Why should we be getting into this kind of agreement? Should, should we be, you know, following it? Because the world is saying, oh, we need to reduce, we need to protect the environment, which is very valid. I understand the world is a global village, but how much of, you know, the uh, toxic are we contributing to the environment or to the globe as a country and as a continent? We'll leave it at that. Thank you so much for being part of the breakfast this morning, uh, Dr. Eugene Utu. Well, that, that is it. Uh, thank Utua, you very much. I'm, thank uh, you. Just to quickly, just to make a final remark that yes, I, issues of uh, climate justice, I certainly agree with you. But if we are not there, we cannot pursue it. If we are outside the box. If we are inside the box, yes, we can also make our voice count. And that is why we need to sign and be part of it and indeed we have signed. Thank you very much. Well, that's it. Uh, I, I totally appreciate your time. Uh, Dr. Eugene Utwa, thank you for being part of the breakfast this morning. He is an environmental specialist uh, as well as a consultant. We have been talking about the plan to inaugurate the uh, committee and also ensure the implementation of the Climate Change Act 2021. That's it on The Breakfast. If you missed that on any part of the show, it will be all right to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And do subscribe to our YouTube channel, We're at Plus TV Africa and Plus TV Africa Lifestyle. You can also follow us on Limex at www.limex.tv and Glow TV app anywhere in the world. My name is Messi Bopo. Have a great day.